what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about elastic and inelastic um, collisions. And so make yourself a continuum in your notes. And on this side, put elastic. Right, on this side, put inelastic. Right? And elastic just means bouncy. Yeah, so, so this, um, when I set up this collision like this, I'll show you an elastic collision. I'll show you an elastic collision, okay? This is an elastic collision. These guys don't stick against each other. And this is, that's very bouncy. Isn't that very bouncy? I would characterize that as very bouncy. That's a very bouncy situation there, right? Okay, so this is, this is elastic. Whoa, that was inelastic there for a moment. Okay, and, and basically the, the cool thing about this is that since the kinetic energy is conserved, and we could, we could say it is, right, um, you can actually solve these things exactly. If I know this mass and this mass and the two velocities beforehand, you set up momentum equals momentum, right, and then you set up kinetic energy equals kinetic energy, and it's a royal pain in the, 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 the uh, tuchus, okay, but you can solve exactly for what the momentum will be afterwards. It's not like it's, it's predetermined. It's not like somebody has to tell you what the momentum of one is uh, afterwards. You can figure it out exactly from what it is. You can make a prediction, which is kind of a cool thing. Okay, so that is elastic, um, and these things are also have this other property that they are reversible. That is, you could see this film forward or backward, and you wouldn't be able to tell which one is which. Let me just show you this. Okay, there's that one, right? We could also have this, right, which looked about the same kind of ish, yeah. Okay, you can't really tell which one's happening forward, which one's happening backwards. Okay, so that's an elastic collision. Here is an inelastic collision. And these things are not terribly reversible. There, they stopped dead, exactly. Do you see that? That was perfect, right? Okay, and so they had energy before, uh, and, and, but, but afterwards there was no kinetic energy, right? And if we saw that backwards, it would look like this. They'd be sitting still right? They'd start to vibrate and then they would rip themselves apart and start flying down the track in opposite directions, right? You would know that either you're watching The Exorcist or that that couldn't happen. You're seeing it backwards, correct? Yeah? So, so when we talk about elastic and inelastic, when we say reversible and irreversible, that's what we mean, okay? Now there's times when you want things to be reversible. Like if you hit something with your car, reversible is very nice because that means your car looks the same before and after the collision. Um, and irreversible is not so good. Yeah, she's here. Okay. All right. Don't open it. Pass it back to Emily. Okay, let's keep hitting the right arrow here. Um, kinetic energy is conserved. That's a good thing to write in your notes. Okay. Uh, a spring bumper on your car. Okay, um, if you put an actual spring bumper, it's illegal to, but if you put a spring bumper on your car, um, then it would be, why would it be a bad idea? You hit something and it, yeah, it like launches you off of their bumper, right? You go flying, right? this is not a good thing, right? Uh, in accidents, you want to get rid of kinetic energy, right? But a spring bumper would, um, would, uh, would, would be a good thing if you, if you wanted to bounce into things and, and have it look the same afterwards, right? Uh, molecules, when molecules hit the inside of a container, if I've got a, a, a bottle full of uh, air, right, the molecules inside that container are striking the insides of the container, and what's happening is it's not a magnetic force, it's actually an electric repulsion. The electron clouds are coming close and going away like that. Those collisions are perfectly elastic, okay? And elastic collisions are reversible, we already said that, right? Um, inelastic collisions are sticky and crumply. Crumply, sticky, crumply. I don't know if that's a word, crumply. And if it is, is it L-E-Y? I don't know. Okay. Kinetic energy is not conserved. Okay, like, so like a bullet sticking in a block of wood is an example of one of these. Uh, your car bumper at a velocity greater than five miles per hour is not reversible. Something irreversible will happen to your car. But what's interesting is that they've actually made the bumpers so that they're reversible below that speed. Yeah, so low speed collisions, you don't have to buy a new bumper. High speed collisions, cars are strategically irreversible. They're strategically designed to crumple. We could make cars, and we used to make cars, much stronger 
than we do now. We used to make cars super strong. And, and like the, my, my friend of mine had this um, 1963 uh, blue Chevy pickup. I think it was a Chevy. Might be a Ford. Okay. He would, he would be turning over in his grave if I like, got it wrong. I think it was Chevy. Okay. Anyway, um, and it was made of this really, really thick metal. We, we were going like, to pull all the dents out of it. The dent pullers we bought would break before they could pull the dents out of the metal. It was so thick and strong right? that we decided the dents looked good. And the idea there was that the car will survive the accident. People don't survive accidents, do they? Yeah, so you, know, you can pass the car on to your, you know, your heirs or something like that, right? Because you're not going to survive, you know, who survives car accidents, right? Okay, well, nowadays, nowadays there's, there's a strategy, right? In fact, um, in my Volkswagen Rabbit, the little thing that attaches the front bumper is actually a piece of, like, steel tubing in the, in the frame. They've strengthened the frame, right? Well, if they made it just in exactly a perfect piece of steel tubing, well, steel tubing is, is amazingly strong. You can take, in fact, just a plastic straw and stick it through a potato. Plug one in and just go, if you smack it just right and keep it straight, it'll go through the potato. This is an amazing thing, yeah? Okay, but why is that a bad thing in a car to have these like really strong steel tubes pointing forward in the car? Yeah, you're gonna skewer somebody, that's the first thing that maybe is wrong with that, right? Okay, and then the second thing is that it's not going to slow you down gradually. If you run into something really solid, it's going to slow you down right now. You know, the whole car is going to stop right now, and you might not survive that impact. So what they did, if you look at it, if you look at that little uh, frame piece, it has these little... Why do you suppose it has that? The cross section has these little... Right? It's weaker, yeah. It's not quite as strong, it's in fact, but it's not totally weak. Right? It's got some crumplage. It's strategically designed to smush. Yeah? Right? It's strategically designed to smush. So this is how cars save your life. Okay? Basically, the idea is this. People wear seatbelts. The seatbelts keep them in the seat. The seat provides protection. And the seatbelts keep them against the seat. And in fact, in a car accident, there's actually these things called seatbelt tensioners that are going to pull you back into your seat. So assuming you're wearing it, these things are actually going to tension the seatbelt and hold you in place, yes? Okay. Then there are these airbags. The airbags basically fill all the space around you. Okay. So that you are surrounded by this like cage of metal. Yeah? It's there. It's the, it's the support posts for the windows. It's the, you know, the front of the firewall. There's parts of the car that are designed to not crumple and be very strong. Right? And inside that space, it's like uh, when you buy like... Uh, uh, sometimes you've ever seen packaging in the mail where there's like all this foam in there that's filled all the space? That's amazingly good, isn't it? Yeah, that's the idea, is that, that it's not there when you don't need it, but it inflates with explosives, right? It inflates instantly when there's an accident and, and keeps you in the space, surrounds you with this stuff, and then you decelerate over a great distance, yeah? Now, outside that area that's immediately around you, everything is designed to crumple. Your fenders, your frame, the hood of your car, the engine, all of these things, right, are designed to crumple. Now, have you ever heard the story of the person that like, gets in a tiny accident and it costs like $8,000 to fix? Yeah, they just basically started crumpling their crumple zones, yeah? Right? You could straighten them out and just like put a little paint on them, but why don't we do that? It doesn't look quite as good, but, but supposing you didn't care. Is it possible that metal once crumpled isn't quite as strong? Yeah, there we go, right? It's not going to provide the same amount of protection, so they replace them, right? They have to replace like the entire quarter panel and the entire, right? So that's the notion there. So now, now the idea is that the car basically is hosed and you survive. Huh? There's a good thing. Now, the interesting thing historically about this is that um, when auto manufacturers, for example, seat belts, right? When, when, we, when they discovered that people and scientifically showed that people survived accidents far better if they were contained inside there with a seat belt. The automobile company said something like this, didn't they? They said, oh, that's going to cost us more, but the benefits to society are so great that we just can't, we can, can't help but to do this, correct? Or did they have to be forced to do it by a law? Did they fight it tooth and nail? Which is the one that probably happened? Yeah, it was that they fought it tooth and nail, right? Yeah. Okay. Then when, they, when we came along with airbags, airbags are immensely expensive. Yeah? Have you ever had to replace airbags? It's like a thousand bucks or something at least to replace the airbags in a car. So if you like hit a, a, a traffic divider and set off all the airbags in your car, uh, ooh, that's sad, right? Okay. So, so, so automobile manufacturers, when they, when they showed that airbags saved lives, they immediately said, boy, this is really going to cost us a lot of money, but we'll do it because we love people. Or do they fight it tooth and nail and have to be forced by uh, legislation to do it? 